had a, we had a good opportunity this week to listen to Pastor David deal with a difficult subject. And I was very, not only was very proud of him for doing it, because I think in all my years, although I know some of you have walked with the Lord longer than I have, I don't think I've ever heard a message on ethnicity in the, in the church. So I was proud of him for stepping up and doing that. I was proud of him for challenging my life. And uh, if you didn't, uh, if you didn't hear it, I would encourage you to go online and hear it. Uh, I don't know if the online version actually has you singing as well, but if it does, it's worth listening to again. Because uh, you were great. <laughs> but um, one of the things that struck me in that message was, you know, I, one thing I like, uh, one thing I love about David's preaching is he continually draws the entire uh, scripture, the, the kind of the scope of scripture together, and, and going all the way back to the Tower of Babel, uh, where God separated people, and then all the way to the New Jerusalem, where God brings everybody back together. Again. Uh, Tower of Babel, they all said, let's make a name for ourselves. The New Jerusalem, it says, they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Uh, I mean, you, you just kind of grab those, those things and you just see that God all along the way is preparing us to understand a fullness of a plan that, that nobody even recognized at the time, you know? And we're still uh, seeing it unfold. But I guess the thing that struck me again um, so I just started thinking as I was listening, I started thinking through all the all the various ethnic groups we have here sitting in this room. Mm. How many of you were not born in the United States? I'm just curious, raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You were born in Texas, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where were you born, Homer? Paul, Shepherd Air Force Base. Okay. Uh, one of the things that strikes me is is the ethnic diversity. Uh, of the church, and um, I have to say that it's interesting when I start thinking about having South American, Central American, North American, British Isles, European, Central Asian, Southeast Asia, Korean, all, all these things just sitting in, in, in this room together. Um, it's really a blessing, and it's, it's interesting to me because when I first came here to Grace, it didn't seem like that was the case. Um, Robin and I lived down in North Hollywood, and I can remember we came up here checking out the church, and we went to Wendy's. And it's and we were it caught us by surprise that there was a, a white Caucasian blonde person waiting on us because down in North Hollywood it was a whole different a whole different vibe completely. Um, and it, dropped, it made me go step back to where I, when I grew up in L.A., um, there was ethnicity everywhere around me. I had black teachers, I had, I had black t workers at the school when I was in elementary school. Um, and when I moved to Glendale, it was like, what is this? This is, this is, very, this is very different. So I recognize it, and, and David was, was, was pretty... Uh, uh, transparent in his message and uh, and it struck me because even in jest at times I have to be careful looking at my own life my own experiences and recognizing that growing up in a house where my dad uh, came from Mississippi and he grew up there in the, the teens and the 20s uh, the wallpaper of my life was very different and uh, verbiage and how people were referred to and all that stuff I didn't know it was was different. That was what was normal to me, and uh, so I had to take a uh, a real good look at myself. And I and I guess I have to say the same thing. To, uh, my encouragement to you is I hope you do too, um, because there are times when I uh, even in jest um, I have to recognize that I have stereotypes in my head, and uh, and I start thinking about various races who are smarter or better athletes or worse drivers or <laughs> this is all in my head of course. Uh, lazy uh, hot tempered uh, 
most likely to join a gang. I mean, there's just everything goes into my head and I start thinking to myself, when I let myself go there and that becomes the wallpaper of my life, uh, even if I'm jesting, even if I throw something out and I think, well, who's going to hear? I, the, the, thing that I'm, the thing that I have to continue to remember is that when God creates with purpose and with uniqueness and with uh, whatever diversity he uses, uh, he's not laughing at my jokes, you know, even if I'm just saying them to myself. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you know, you get cut off on the road by somebody and you look and it may be somebody who's of, of a different ethnic origin and all of a sudden you're thinking, well, that's why. <laughs> and, and I sit there thinking to myself, I understand where I came from that that was easy for me to develop. But at the same time, you know, it's, not, it's like saying not every Christian it bombs abortion clinics, right? Yeah. Not every Muslim kills another Muslim. It, you, it can go way, 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 way down the line. And so I, I guess I just, I, I recognize that God kind of flicked me on the back of my head, which was my dad used to do. Um, because I, I, I really don't ever feel, well, I need to not feel that humor at somebody else's expense is something that makes God laugh, because I don't think it does. Um, and if we laugh and if we and allow ourselves to have those things in our heads, we tend to, to really start to see at, at, that we're missing the complexity of what God has created. Uh, because it, what I loved about David's message was he trumpeted the diversity. He didn't try to just say, hey, we're all one in Christ. But that's true. And I think that the, when we, we finally come down to the everybody walking into heaven from every nation and every tribe and every person, we're going to recognize that we all are one in Christ. But there's still distinctiveness in that, and that's something to be celebrated. It's something to, to appreciate and to feel like, wow, I'm sitting in a room, and yet I'm sitting in a room where some, that next to somebody who was born in Argentina or born in Korea or born in Mexico or wherever the case may be. Um, the thing that saddens me at times is I know there are families who have come to grace and left because they have faced ethnic um, criticism or prejudice or whatever the case may be. Um, and in fact, this message that David gave us um, actually drew out some of that in people. They wanted us to be sure we knew as leadership it's still going on here. It goes on in ABF classes. It goes on, especially in, the, in our youth. And where did our youth hear it or learn it? Probably around the dinner table. So my sense is, is that there's, there's an issue there that, that I, I don't want to just kind of play over. Um, but I, I, I sincerely hope that grace can be a place where where we stand against anything that would demean anything or even try to picture some, some ethnic group, whatever it might be, in any particular way that kind of disenfranchises them from the body, you know? Uh, Peter, the Apostle Peter said, truly understand that God shows no partiality. We need to be the same, no matter how we've grown up. But even just being challenged in that message, I recognize there's a lot that I grew up with that I've got to be careful of, that I have to really reorient and maybe just ask God to get rid of altogether. Um, God spoke to Hosea and said, those who were not my people, I will call my people. And, and her who was not beloved, I will call beloved. And in the very place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they will be called sons of the living God. And that's why Paul writes, there's not Greek or Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, for free, but Christ is all and in all. So um, I, I guess I just felt like I needed to be sure that you knew uh, that, first of all, my heart can still be convicted uh, in, uh, in the everyday. And, and sometimes I think one of the reasons why we don't look at it is because we're not faced with it a lot not often challenged in church to recognize some of those little things that can, can, can grow on us. Um, so I hope you'll take a look at yourself in that regard because we're sitting in a room 
that is very, very ethnically diverse. And I would hate to think that anybody would ever hear anything in this room that would somehow make them feel less than or different than or, or set apart or any of that kind of stuff. That makes sense? God deserves better than that, right? All right. Would you take